Welcome to Dear Hank and John, or as John wishes he could call it, but won't be able to before 2028 at the earliest, Dear John and Hank. Today it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we've been making this podcast for a long time now, and it's hard to expect everyone to have listened to every episode, but there are a number of things that have happened over the year plus that we've been doing this that get referred to, and maybe you don't know what the heck we're talking about. Also, we just wanted to relive some of the best moments of the podcast, so this is the best of episode of Dear Hank and John, the best of what we have done so far, just a bunch of funny stuff that we put together for your listening enjoyment. I hope that it's a good time, and now... We will begin. Today's podcast is brought to you by life. The most interesting thing the universe has ever done, but make no mistake about it, temporary. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, Today's podcast is brought to you by your needy family. (laughs) There's seven of them, and they all want gifts. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Victor, who recently became a dad. Victor... He's going to find out that dad jokes just come out of you naturally. This is today's podcast is also finally brought to you by All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. Oh, must it be? All I Want for Christmas be? is You by Mariah Carey, only available on American radio stations after Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a big spider. What the frick? Am I going to have to host the podcast alone because <laughs> there's a spider in your room? Oh, or are you going to be able to it just... Has- Get on with it. You know, sometimes I think, you know, there are a lot of legs in the world. (laughs) But then I realize that most of them are on that spider. (laughs) Hank Green, 1980 to 2146. Most of the legs in the world are on spiders. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a lot of water on Mars right now. Yeah. Tons. And Mars has had a more variable climate than we previously believed. Yeah. Were there dinosaurs on Mars? No. But that would have been high school Hank Green's ultimate book. It's Jurassic Park plus the Mars trilogy. No, you know what would be that is if we were like, you know, it would be, we could make dinosaurs, but we've seen the Jurassic Park movies, so we're not going to put them on Earth. We know it would be a bad idea to put them on Earth. But we're going to have Jurassic Mars. Jurassic Mars. Oh, my God. Hank, we have a bona fide hit on our hands. Somebody call Steven Spielberg Jurassic Mars. We had Jurassic Park. We had Jurassic World. The not logical next step, Jurassic Solar System, Jurassic Mars. All right, John, you're the writer, so I expect to read a short story called Jurassic Mars within the next six months. Mm, I'm pretty sure that that is a copyrighted idea, and they seem to protect that copyright pretty aggressively. Um, there's no, there's nothing copyrighted about the word Jurassic. Mm, I think there's something copyrighted about the idea of bringing dinosaurs back from the dead Nah. You don't think so? Nah. No way. All right. That's, then it's settled. We're, forget writing a short story. I'm a movie producer now, Hank. I have, a, I have a movie producing deal with Fox 2000. I'm going to make the movie Jurassic <laughs> Mars. Do you think Spielberg will mind? <laughs> no. No. Especially if it's really, really uh, surrealist and, and, and crazy, just stupid. To- did you see Jurassic World? Uh, no. Uh, it, uh, maybe it should be animated and it should be for kids, uh, but there should still be lots of blood and guts. Jurassic Mars for kids. I mean, it's a great idea for a TV show. Uh, Dinosaurs on Mars is a fantastic <laughs> idea for any format. I cannot think of a format where dinosaurs on Mars wouldn't work. See, Hank, when you come up with, when you tell me the news from Mars, I try to use that to make your relationship with Mars even deeper and better. And when I tell you the news from AFC Wimbledon, you dismiss it. And that is the fundamental difference between I, us. I, I did am everything a I could to be supportive giving, this time. Thoughtful, engaged sibling who is truly a collaborator, and you are an underminer. You are trying to undermine my passion and the world's greatest institution owned by its supporters. I did did everything I could. I'll try to be better in the future. Oh, Hank, what did we learn today other than uh, Jurassic Mars? Do you you think that we could get uh, Kristen Bell to play Veronica Mars, the character, and solve a mystery involving dinosaurs on Mars? 
You know, uh, there's always one step too far, and you took it. <laughs> okay. We need to keep thinking. Like, we've only had this. We've only had this dinosaur on Mars idea for like five minutes. Okay, let's not expect it to completely cohere yet. Okay. But it's okay. coming together. All right. I John. can feel it. I can feel the creative juices working. As soon as we go off the air of the podcast, I think you and I need to set up some meetings with Hollywood producers, and, <laughs> and it's just all dinosaurs on Mars all the time. Uh, there is much to be hopeful about. That is how I'm doing. How are you? Well, first of all, I just want to say how thankful I am that we got through your section of the How's It Goings without any mention, not a single mention, of Taylor Swift. Oh, that reminds me, though, that the weather is beautiful, likely because Taylor Swift's 1989 concert tour is coming to its American end <laughs> very soon. We have another question. This one's from Ryan. And Ryan says, Dear Hank and John, my name is Ryan, and I'm fortunate enough to live a pretty comfortable lifestyle. By the way... Wait, wait, wait. What's, what's his name? By the way, my name is Ryan. Uh, so I, I, it's the 17th time you've said that his name is Ryan in the course of 12 seconds. So I've recently started to attend a new university, um, and my new friends, who call me Ryan, are not as fortunate as me. <laughs> <clears throat> One of my friends told me... I, I don't know why, Hank. I don't know why that joke got me so much, <laughs> but it got me so much. Oh, my God. <clears throat> One of my friends told... Oh, God. One of my friends said to me, Ryan, I can't afford groceries this week, Ryan. <laughs> Just keep doing it. It doesn't stop being funny for me. It's like a sine wave. It's like every time I think that I've heard enough rhymes, another one comes and I just, I'm like, I'm literally in tears. So I, Ryan, offered to pay for her groceries and she got mad at me, uh, who is Ryan, for suggesting that, for suggesting that and now won't even talk to Ryan anymore. I've had other similar experiences when trying to help my friends out. Am I wrong for trying to help my friends out financially? I just want to help them. Love, Ryan, who is Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> I like your podcast. I'm my name sorry is Ryan. to laugh at what is not, not a funny it's question. It's not a super funny question. Um, it's also not like, you know, it's, it's not the heaviest one we've dealt with this episode, though. So if we're going to make a joke during true. one question, Here's what I would might say. as well be this one. Here's what I would say, Ryan. <laughs> um, Ryan, I think that you are trying uh, to be nice and helpful. Would you say, John? Wait, would you? People... Would you say? Would you say he's trying? <laughs> <laughs> Catherine doesn't like this. She's making a face. <laughs> I would say, I would say, Ryan, that you are trying uh, to be nice and helpful. But when lots and lots of people tell you that you are not being nice or helpful, it is important to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Hank, do you remember in our last episode how I mentioned that I dearly want to have some kind of corporate sponsor in my life? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it just so happens that this very week, uh, 478 Snickers bars arrived <laughs> at my office. <laughs> How did this magical thing occur? Uh, the nice folks at Mars, mm -hmm. the nice folks at Mars sponsored uh, VidCon, and while I was talking to them at a sponsor party, I mentioned that I am a longtime supporter of their company via my affection for Snickers bars. Uh, apparently, this went up the chain somehow, and so a uh, refrigerated box full of delicious, cool. Snickers bars, 478 of them, arrived at my office yesterday. And first off, I just want to say thank you to my personal sponsor, Snickers. Secondly, I just want to say other companies looking to sponsor me, <laughs> please feel free to send me 478 of your products. Um, so, so, so what you're saying is that you were just, you were just, just, Having a chat at VidCon, first of all, I have yep. to say, like, we sell all, all of the sponsorships out of my office. We have those relationships. Yep. We have lots of con – and never did it ever cross my plate that an option for a part of the VidCon sponsorship was just a gigantic, like, house-sized box of Snickers. That – that didn't show up on any of the any of the deals, and I'm I'm a little frustrated that apparently all I had to do was have a conversation with somebody. This is like the weird life of of, of the public YouTuber, where it's just people are like, "Hey, yeah, you like our thing? Here, have a have two years worth of them." 
If, if I wouldn't say that 478 Snickers bars is two years worth of Snickers bars. I'd say it's closer to it's a solid month, though. I mean, I'm going to have a great <laughs> I'm going to have a great month of August. Let's put it that I way. D- I like Snickers very much, but 478 Snickers bars is like 10 years worth of Snickers. Mm, I'll report back next week and tell you how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, I, I'm trying I have to think to of what else to the people at so Mars. Hank, no, to the people at the Mars company, not to people of, of the planet Mars. I must say, I, I really, really like peanut M and M's a lot. I, by the way, I also love peanut M and M's. For the record, if the people at Mars no, are looking no, to have this be an ongoing no, hey, relationship, hey. <laughs> is, stop stepping on my stepping on my com- communications with the Mars people. Uh, Hank, I'm wondering if there are other products out there that you would like to receive 478 of. Yeah, if I could receive like if I could receive uh, 478 uh, Hartford Whalers hats. <laughs> are you a fan of the Hartford well, Whalers? I like them because they have a really nice logo, and also they don't exist anymore as a, as a team. Right. So that does somewhat uh, that makes it. That makes it a slightly less good investment from the company's perspective, just because they no longer have a brand to promote. <laughs> I, do, I completely disagree. They have a tremendous brand to promote. It's Hartford Whalers merch. Uh, <laughs> merch for a, a sports team that doesn't exist anymore is exactly what people like me who like uh, who like logos but not sports is looking for, are looking for. I, I myself, uh, I'm a longtime fan of my Chevrolet Volt. Uh, I've had mm-hmm. my Volt since 2012, and I would love 478 Chevrolet Volts. If the if the Neantic company could send me 478 Pidgeys, <laughs> that would be fantastic, because uh, that would really help me with the leveling up. I mean, if we're requesting 478 Pokemons at a time, Hank, I can provide you with 478 <laughs> Pidgeys. They're sitting there in my <laughs> freaking list of Pokemon right now. What I need is 478 uh, Jolteons or whatever. <laughs> Vaporeons. Where where are my 478 Vaporeons, Niantic? I, I feel like I'm the greatest ambassador for your product ever. In fact, Hank, while we've been recording this podcast, I've been studiously uh, catching rattatas, which grow in Indianapolis like an actual weed. Nah, oh. that 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 doesn't that doesn't sound great. Uh, we, uh, you know, I. It, it's every Pokemon is important though. You can't say that one is important just less important just because there are lots of them. That's not a very nice way to feel. Just because they're successful, successful animals and are and are weird, weird, um, you know, human habitats, Pidgeys and Rattatas uh, and and Drowsies, they've been very successful in the places where we live, and that's fine. I think I think we should reward them for their success. I tell you what else I'd enjoy, Hank. 478 pairs of the sweatpants that I wear. I just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stuck on how, how, how many Snickers bars I received, and it's given me hope that I'm, I'm really just a request away from the 478 Diet Dr. Peppers that I desperately need to go on living. What about... Wait a second. What about if we could get a brand deal with the U.S. Mint and they could send us $478 <laughs> bills? I mean, I feel like that's a... Yeah, is that is that an option? Are they are they, uh, are they open to brand deals? <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by the U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint providing you with high quality hundred dollar bills since eighteen eighty one. Do you know when the hundred dollar bill first went into circulation, John? Yes, Hank. It was eighteen eighty one. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows I also. That. Uh, not that I want in any way to problematize my relationship with the Mars Company, maker of the greatest candies in the history of the world, uh, but there are some, there are some other candy companies that I, I wish would also sponsor me. Okay. Uh, the makers of Fun Dip. If I could have four hundred seventy-eight uh, Fun Dips, that would make me really happy. I like Fun Dip because uh, because you put sugar on sugar and then you eat it. Big League Chew. I would love 478 <laughs> pouches of Big League Chew. Uh, 478 Abba Zabba's, please. <laughs> May I have uh, maybe 478 Watchamacallits? Oh, God, I love a good Watchamacallit. Who makes Watchamacallits? Why aren't they probably, sponsoring us? Probably Mars. <laughs> can I get, can I get uh, 478 uh, p- Pockies? Some Pockies, Hank, please? whatchamacallits are made... Packages of Pocky? Whatchamacallits are made by the Hershey Company. Um, oh, oh. We need to reach out to them. If anybody listening 
happens to be the CEO of the Hershey Company, let me just say that next to Snickers bars, whatchamacallits are my favorite candy bars. Hank, we need to move on. This is not ultimately a podcast about us trying to acquire 478 uh, items. It's ultimately a podcast in which we answer our listeners' questions and provide them with exceptionally dubious advice. Uh, apparently, Clary, Clara is having a hard time uh, c- preventing herself from being distracted by our excellent death-based humor and is burning her food. So let's just uh, let's remember to yell at Clara every once in a while during this podcast. Oh my God, it's burning! I think I think probably she's good right now. But maybe not. Well, she's got that. She's got that. She can just um, make it so that her timer, instead of just making a beeping sound, uh, makes that sound. And I think that that would uh, it would persuade almost anyone to take their pizza out of the oven. You know, I think I might do that. I might that that might be my new timer. Can how do you do that on an iPhone? Somebody somebody tell me how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's answer a different question. Okay. Dear Jenny. Nope. Dear John and Hank. <laughs> <laughs> The question is from Jenny. Dear John and Hank. Um, <laughs> all right, Hank, let's move on to another question from our listeners. This one, by the way, you can email us at hankandjohn at gmail.com. We always forget to say that, Hank. And yet somehow people find a way, which I appreciate, but it's hankandjohn <laughs> at gmail.com is our email address. Okay, Hank, this question comes from Sydney, who writes, Dear John and Hank, I need some dubious advice on a very important grammatical issue. It's how to shorten the term as per usual. People usually say usual out loud as huge, like as per huge. By the way, when Sydney what? says people, what? I think Sydney is referring to yeah. her peers who are, I'm guessing, 24 years younger than I am. Anyway, how do you spell <laughs> the huge in as per huge? Does this make any sense? I just want to be able to write as per huge without saying in parentheses, I shortened that from usual. <laughs> <laughs> think i mean sydney you are my hero uh, I, on every level i love every part of this question i i i think it's pretty clear i i think it's y-o-o-j it's not y-o-o-j if you write as, as per, per y-o-o-j people will actually pronounce they'll have to like pause and they'll be like as per huge <laughs> as per huge is that oh, is donald yeah, trump per- saying huge what is happening with as per huge <laughs> No, you got to get the shh in there. So I'm going to go Y-O-O-S-H as per yush. Nope, that doesn't work either. No, definitely not. Definitely not. It's yush. It's Y-O-O-J. W-O-G-H. As per wooj. Uh, that, that's woosh. That's, a, that's an existing word, <laughs> W-O-O-S-H. We can't use an existing I said word. I G. G-H. 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 Uh, but anyway, okay. I'm gonna as go for with, whoosh also works. I'm gonna go with U D G E E. The second E is silent. Um, <laughs> it could be pronounced udgy, but I, I think that it will get across huge. This is an incredibly uh, difficult question, Hank. This might be the hardest question we've ever been asked to answer on Dear Hank and John. Uh, y O U S H. As for huge, nope. Nope. As per yush, as per huge, yush with a J. You got to get the Y O U Z S H. Yush. Y O U Z S H. I mean, that <laughs> that is definitely wrong. I'm looking at it. I just typed it out. It's you're close though. I think this. It's I think, also more letters than usual. Just to be clear. Well, yeah, no. There's definitely no way to spell it with fewer letters than are in usual. No, Y O O J. Y O O J. Huge. But doesn't that doesn't huge sound like Donald Trump saying huge? <laughs> it does. It does. Yes. You've got to get the sh in huge. Is it Y O O S H? That's yush. Dang it. As for uh, Y O O J S H, as for huge. Y O O J S H. I don't dislike Y O O J S H, although it looks very weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I agree. It looks very weird. Uh, I mean, I don't think that. I don't know if this is going to be entertaining to our podcast listeners, but you oh, should really oh, oh, see Hank it. and I shared Google Doc right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just Hank and I desperately typing out things that sound vaguely like as per usual. So somewhat on this topic, Hank, when my books are, tra are, are published in languages with other alphabets, especially in, in um, like Russian or, or countries where there is no J sound, they use a mm. mix of the like D and X sound to make the J of like J Dijon, basically. It's like mm -hmm. Dijon. Mm -hmm. um, and the, so the, like, there's the like sh sound of, of the X like letter and the D sound of D. And so they usually translate my name in such a way that I can sort of read the Cyrillic alphabet, but I always read it as like, this book was by D. John Green. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're running up against a similar problem, which is that the Latin alphabet has no way of, of saying as per usual, which I'm almost going to suggest, Sydney, that even though it's going to make you feel like an old fuddy-duddy, you just spell out usual, because I don't think there's any way that we can get to use with our alphabet. What, what about what about the O with the unlaut? Oh, like why unlauted O-J-E? Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Wait, what are you what? How are you spelling it? Uh, why umlauted U J E J E with an umlaut as per huge? No, that's still J. Uh, but maybe an, it's uh, still huge. Why umlauted like luge? Because I'm what I'm hearing is huge. E. I can't type an umlauted U. Apparently, I don't know how to do You're it gonna, with my keyboard. Uh, Sydney, we figured it out, but it does involve an umlaut, <laughs> and I don't know if that's on your uh, iPhone keyboard. But um, I would go with as per huge. I don't know why I assume, by the way, that Sydney has an iPhone and types with an iPhone. It's like I feel like I know her, although I don't. Um, but as per usual, with a, with an umlaut is the way. That's the way. Yeah, maybe just umlauted U J E. Oh, that's good. Umlauted U J E. That's simple. It's fewer letters than usual. It also it's uh, as per usual. Nope, I don't like the J. I'm gonna stick with with Y umlauted U S H. Maybe S H E. <laughs> well, well, it's possible that we spent enough time talking about. Well, this, I almost feel like we should start a spinoff podcast. Um, <laughs> where, <laughs> where we just decide upon new spellings for uh, abbreviations. I'm into it. <laughs> Or how to pronounce things like Hank? Do you ever wonder how to uh, like? Remember back in the day um, when it, instead of saying BRB, if someone was going to be um, gone for a while from the internet, they would write AFK mm -hmm, away sure. from keyboard. Yep. I always used to pronounce that in my head as AFK. Sure. But I've never known how to pronounce BRB. You know, burb. is it burb? Sure. Is it brub? Burb. Burb. That's, uh, that's that makes sense. It's interesting when we look at words that don't have vowels, the noise that we put in. I talked to a linguist about this one time. Is this sort of like what we call a, like a neutral vowel sound? I don't know if we call mm -hmm. it that. But in, in English, it's a it's sort of a U sound, like uh, and like burb, b, b. Uh, and, and actually, if you listen to English very systematically, though, that's most of the noises we make are these uh noises. And we don't even think about it. But like if I just said about... Mm -hmm. That's an A, but in fact, I just said a uh, bout. Right, uh, and it's so like it's more of a U noise than an A noise. Who knows why and how ling linguists figure this stuff out? But I was fascinated to talk about it, and that. It's a really great story I told. That was a really great story, but it wasn't as good as the 12 minutes that we spent <laughs> analyzing how to write as per usual. Oh man, I feel like we're at, we're we're probably at, I feel like we're at a low questions per episode right now <laughs> yeah we haven't this has not been our best work yeah uh today's podcast is brought to you by uh, our best work y you didn't get it today <laughs> today's podcast is also brought to you by stacy's mom uh she uh, has a, a purple tank <laughs> and she also has it going on um it's easy to forget that stacy's mom has it going on because they only remind you about it 16 times over the course of the song well i mean but, but she does it's important to tell you because you're so distracted by her purple tank it's true i mean it's weird because like why do you really want to hang out with stacy's mom is it because you think that she's beautiful or is it because you wish to acquire uh this purple tank that she's driving around who knows or maybe just spend a little bit of time in it. Today's podcast is also brought to you by the Western Brown Line L Stop in the city of Chicago, containing all of the world's dead pigeons. And finally, today's podcast is brought to you by the noise, uh. The noise, uh. 
It sounds like a you noise, but it's really just everywhere and everything we say all the time. Ah. Uh. I want to tell a story about Catherine one time. Can I tell this story about you? <laughs> yes. You know what I'm going to tell? Yes. Oh, man. So Catherine did an internship at a, a, at a wildlife rehab place. And she was living in a dorm, basically, with a bunch of other people. And uh, there's this guy in the dorm that Catherine really didn't like. He was really annoying, and he was difficult, and he was mean, and... I can't even really remember. I agree. The like, I met him, and I also really did not. Of why I disliked him. But yes. He was uh, not a... Yes, he was an unpleasant person, and he was I very... I try not to think about him. Yeah. You know? It's not a thing I really want to maintain and, a memory of. And I was visiting Catherine at this <clears throat> dorm, and she admitted to me that she would... Uh, <laughs> when no one was looking, squeeze his fruit. <laughs> Go into the shared kitchen area. <laughs> and I would just like squeeze all his pears <laughs> so that they would get brown spots. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> so bad. Just... You, you never want to get there with a person. <laughs> I wasn't in a good place. To, sque- to fruit squeezing. <laughs> it was a very stressful time in my life. I know, I know. Uh... I know. <laughs> You're not proud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but it was yeah, it wasn't a. I'm so I'm so very passive, <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of door slamming in my life. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and mm. uh, it's just important to keep those lines of communication open so that yeah, uh, we don't well, get to fruit squeezy fa- it, phase. Yeah, you know. But you know, I didn't <clears throat> care about maintaining a relationship with this person. So no, it's not like I was really just going to have a conversation with him about not leaving his dirty things everywhere and yeah. just stop stop being a terrible person. Yeah. Um anyway, one of communal one of living the... is a challenge. Yes, communal living is a huge challenge. Um Oh, boy is it. Yeah. I'm glad I only have to do that with one other person. Like even even then is like, okay, well we'll just keep keep trying. Uh, excellent. Um Oh my god, it's burning. <laughs> Uh, so you do have it. You do have an email style, but you don't have a sign off like Shazam. Right, right, right. I'm not saying um, it should be Shazam. I'm just saying that is an email sign off. The other one that so I have a friend who always writes uh, yours Y R S comma return return and mm. then their name, which I've always kind of liked. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's sort of old fashioned and weird, but very specific. And then I have another friend who I shall not name, but is an extremely famous and successful author who always signs off their emails until anon. Oh, wow. Every time. Every time until anon. And I don't really know what that means. <laughs> what if it was like a what if it was like a cutesy fun thing like pumpkins and penguins, Hank? Oh man, pumpkins and penguins. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cutesy, but like when you're emailing the CEO of YouTube, do you really want to end it with pumpkins and penguins? <laughs> Yes. Hey, Susan Wojcicki. Uh, Hank Green here. Hope all's well. Just a couple of quick notes on the YouTube demonetization crisis. Pumpkins and penguins. Hank. <laughs> I like it. I'm going with it. I think it's a terrible idea and it could literally kill our business. <laughs> I, uh, which, which leads me to, uh, I, I almost forgot about our sponsor this week, which is, of course, uh, the Pump- Pumpkins and Penguins Association of America. Yeah. Pumpkins and penguins. They don't have a ton to do with each other, but we formed this organization for efficiency's <laughs> sake to advocate up upon both, both of their behalfs. I mean, what are like, what are the shared issues of pumpkins and penguins? I guess they're both <laughs> concerned about climate change, like all species. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, they don't. Uh, nope. Mm, not really much. <laughs> Uh, it's like a raven in a writing desk kind of situation here. Okay, Hank, I've got something that pumpkins and penguins have in common. They both waddle. Like, pumpkins don't actually waddle, but you can tell that they would if they had feet. <laughs> I mean, if you give them a little shove, they'll they'll wobble at least, which is like waddling. Right, so like uh, the Penguins and Pumpkins Association of America is standing up for, uh, you know, organisms' rights to waddle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, they both are composed of flesh. They have flesh inside of them. Uh, so the, the yeah, Pumpkins sure. and Penguins Association of America is pro-flesh and uh, the preservation Strongly of flesh. Pro-flesh. 
Yeah, and like not having your flesh scooped out from the inside so that uh, you become a hollow corpse with a light inside of it. Like that's another big issue for both penguins and pumpkins. You know, honestly, I have to say, though, that that's probably the only thing keeping the pumpkins industry alive. So they're probably really pro scooping out flesh and having a light placed inside where there used to be life. It's pretty vital to the continuation of the pumpkin as a species since it's... uh, such a terrible food. Yeah. Do you, do you did you know, John, that like the pumpkin uh, mix at the store that you get to like make pumpkin pies with? It isn't even it isn't even made out of pumpkin because pumpkin isn't of course that good. Not. Pumpkins are disgusting. Which, by the way, is another thing that pumpkins and penguins have in common. Their what? flesh is basically inedible. Oh yeah, yeah. P- uh, penguin flesh is not good. Did you know, John, that penguin flesh is so rich in fat that you can throw it like you can literally have a fire composed of only penguin flesh? Hmm. That is. That is disturbing. Let's move on to uh, what else brought us this podcast today. (laughs) Okay, Hank, let's get to some questions from our listeners. I want to start with what I think is the most important question we got this week. It's from Pia, who wrote, Dear John and Hank, how do I tell my family that I have secretly learned to play the fiddle? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh. I recently saw an amazing folk band, and after their performance, I was inspired to learn to play the fiddle. I'm sorry, I can barely read what, this. What, what, I don't know what's funny about that part. Uh, I, I had thought that, that Pia had already learned how to secretly play the fiddle. <laughs> but it turns out that Pia is planning for a future in which Pia has secretly learned to play the, f- the fiddle, which is not a current current yeah. outcome, but a no, future No, no, no. Pia is putting together a long con, Hank. Uh, However, I predict it will take a while before I'd be comfortable enough to play in front of anyone. That's probably a good point, Pia. I'm also not totally convinced that you're going to be able to teach yourself the fiddle in silence, in secret somewhere, but I wish you luck. In a few years, should I gather my family in the living room and appear to them to their shock playing a jig? Or should I just approach each member of my family individually and surprise them with their favorite tune? Best wishes, Pia. This is the best idea I've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just, I hope this Pia is an has even a, better idea than flying a spacecraft into the center of Jupiter. I, I hope that Pia has a very large home or a, or a garage in the back where it's just like Pia spending a lot of time in the garage. What's she doing? Yeah, up there? Why, does, why does Pia hang out in our soundproof basement so much? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean. I, th- I think as long as you're going to approach each, I think it's better if you approach each I- member of the family individually and play them their favorite tune, ideally yes. arranged specifically for the fiddle. You, uh, but, but in order to do that, you have to make sure that they're not going to communicate to each other that this has already happened. And the only way to really make sure that that's going to happen is if you do this individually with each of them at the exact same time. It's a great And point. so I think what you have to do is have multiples of yourself Mm -hmm. also learn to play the fiddle. Yeah, I think when you learn to play the fiddle, all your clones also learn to play the fiddle, although I'm not sure on the science of that. But my thought was, I totally agree with you that the first person could potentially spoil it for the last person. So I'm imagining that Pia has like four siblings, two parents, and one grandparent who's living in a nursing home. So Mm -hmm. what you're going to want to do, I think, is first, you're going to want to shock your grandmother. Um, You're going to show up. uh, You're going to have a duffel bag. Obviously, you can't have a violin case. That'll give you away. You've got a duffel bag. You show up. Your grandmother's sleeping. Uh, and she just, she wakes up and she's like, oh my God, Pia learned the fiddle. And then, uh, (laughs) you, you cut your grandmother's phone line. She doesn't have a cell phone. (laughs) Thank God. So you just cut the phone line in the nursing home. So she has no way to get to the outside world. You race. No, no, no. uh, You have to cut the the phone line to the whole nursing home. So like the exterior line that runs to the nursing home. Right, because she could use a different phone. I'm sorry, Hank. I didn't think of that. Great point. So you cut the phone line to the whole nursing home. Then you race to your dad's. Uh, workplace. He is an accountant? Yes. Nope. 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 He is in uh, the local symphony orchestra where he plays the violin. (laughs) But Pia had to see a band playing fiddle before she was inspired to, to learn, not from her father, but from some randos. Exactly. So she shows up and her father, of course, begins to weep because he's always wanted Pia to learn the violin. And uh, now she's like a fiddle playing maestro, presumably. I assume that not only do you learn how to play the fiddle, but you're really, really good. And then 
Uh, then you go to your mom's work. She's an accountant. Well, before, but before before she goes to her mom's work, she has to burn the orchestra hall home with her dad in it so he doesn't tell anyone. That seems like a terrible plan. He might die. Well, I mean, he's not going to tell anybody. You're. This is a real human being we're talking about, Hank. This isn't fun in games. We're not having a goof. This is for real. Oh, I apologize. All right, Jesus. I mean, Pia has a real dad who is a real violinist. So then you go to your mom's work. She's the accountant. Uh, you play her, like... Uh, what is a great accountant song? I don't. Has there, has there ever been a great fiddle song about an accountant? Is the devil <laughs> went down to Georgia about an accountant? I can't remember. I don't. I don't think so. I, you know, I'm a little bit worried that you've set this this goof up and you've built in also four siblings. And oh this yeah, goof no. Goof is going to be about 25 minutes long. Oh, just to be clear, this is going to be the rest of the episode of the pod. <laughs> I had a bunch of questions I wanted to answer, but I guess we'll get to them next week. Yeah, I mean, seriously, if if we get to them ever, I, I almost think that we should start a spinoff podcast entirely devoted to Pia's Long Con. We could call it Pia's Long Con, which is a pretty good name for a podcast. <laughs> pretty good. I, I think you should just write a short story. No, I think so with the four siblings, you're going to want to catch them all at the same time. Uh, because you're going to want to see all their faces as they react to both your fiddle playing and to each other's shock about your fiddle playing. I mean, mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is the best idea for a YouTube video I've ever heard of. Pia, you must do this. You must spend years mastering the fiddle. At the like, You must let no one know that you are mastering the fiddle. You must become the greatest fiddle player since that Charlie's Daniel Band song about the devil going down to Georgia, and then you must to do this and film it for us. Yeah, I, th- I think that the hard part isn't going to be cloning. It's going to be uh, finding something boring enough to tell your family you're doing right. that they won't express any interest in it. Great be like, point. oh, Pia has gotten so obsessed with bingo and mm-hmm. she's always down at the bingo hall. Nobody's yeah. going to go join you at the bingo <laughs> hall because it's it's bingo. But but maybe they maybe they will accept that you've just gotten obsessed with bingo, and we'll also explain all the money that you're spending on lessons. Well, I, I my 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 understanding was that Pia was going to be a self taught fiddle player, so that not even a teacher would know about this long con. I think you've got to keep the circle as tight as possible. <laughs> it should just be like Pia, you, me, and everybody who's listening to the podcast. All right. Well, it is. Uh... It is a difficult thing to uh, to pull off, but I'm looking forward to hearing in a few years how it goes. See in the YouTube video. If you if 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 Bia executes, please let us know so we can send a crew down to film. Yeah, for real. I got another question, John. Is that is that okay with you? Uh, yeah, I guess we can move on. This question's from Allison, who writes, "Dear John and Hank, uh, on drinking cereal milk, I think it's very important not to be wasteful." I don't like cereal without milk, but I also hate the taste of the milk after my cereal has been in it. I was just wondering, how do I reconcile these two things? Well, I, one, love the taste of my milk after it's had cereal in it. It's far better than the taste of just milk. So I have never had this problem. I'm just like, I want I want as much of that at the bottom of the bowl as possible. But uh, for you... Uh, I have no suggestions. My suggestion would actually be to go ahead and send your cereal milk to Hank because he's extremely enthusiastic about it, Allison. He lives in Missoula. And in my experience, if you just write uh, a letter, uh, or I guess it wouldn't be a letter, it would be a sealed package. (laughs) If you just, uh, you know, put it in a Ziploc bag there, put it in a box and just write uh, Hank. um, uh, Missoula. Then maybe in parentheses, uh, favorite favorite bridge uh, is is the one in Missoula, the pedestrian one, and then beneath that, Missoula, Montana, and a zip code in Missoula. It'll get to Hank. Yeah, no, no. I think you just write Hank Missoula, and it'll it'll they'll, it'll find its way to me. Uh, but I I would suggest actually that you just put it in the Ziploc and then write on the Ziploc Hank Missoula. And then just put it in your mailbox, and uh, it'll get to no, me. No, you're going to have to put some stamps on there. Listen, the United <laughs> States Postal Service doesn't work for free. Okay? Uh, no, no, it's all about saving milk, John. They, they understand that when it's about efficiency, they can, uh, they can go the extra mile. No, I, I feel like the carbon footprint of that milk would be much higher than just throwing away the milk, actually. <laughs> Allison, the right thing to do in this situation is to throw away the milk. I think probably John is correct. Uh, I, <laughs> is, or, or find a friend who really enjoys cereal. (laughs) 
<laughs> have that friend come over to your house and drink your cereal milk, <laughs> you, which is so much more intimate yes. than anything that you can do. Like it's <laughs> the most horrifyingly intimate thing. I wouldn't even drink the cereal milk of my children. Hank, can I make a uh, terrible confession to you that you already know about? Sure, yes. So I do not like milk in my cereal. And one day, um, I would say maybe three or four years into our marriage, I had a bowl of Raisin Bran and I did what I always do, which is I went over to the uh, refrigerator and I stuck the bowl of Raisin Bran uh, up against the water thing um, so that water would oh. come out and then it would water my Raisin Bran, which is how I like to eat my Raisin what? Bran. And my, I do uh, not know this about you. That is disgusting. And my, my wife, I mean, I, you know, we were married. I think we didn't have children yet, so she still could have gotten out of it. My wife, I mean, th- she's never looked at me before like that with just <laughs> pure disgust. <laughs> And I, I have to say, I think that eating your cereal with water is the best way to eat it. You don't add calories. You don't uh, unnecessarily oh use an animal product. And you get all the sogginess and crunchiness of a good wet cereal. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh my God, John. <laughs> oh, my God. It's delicious. You should oh try it. You, should, you don't know. You've never tried it. It's great. I haven't. It just seems, it seems, it seems inhuman. It seems, uh, it seems not of this world. <laughs> if you told me a space alien put water on their cereal, I would be like, okay, I guess. But a human <laughs> being on the planet Earth. Oh my I'll God. I'll try it. I'll try it tonight. Uh, when I have my, when I have my 11 o'clock bowl of, of, of uh, frosted mini wheats. I'll put some water on there and, and, and waste some frosted mini wheats for you. Just make them awful and destroy Let them. Let me know uh, how it tastes on the next episode of uh, Dear Hank and John. In the meantime, I think that we have uh, adequately plumbed the depths of Allison's question, and it is time to uh, a- answer a new one. Except that there won't be another question, because now we are back in the present. Back in 2017. We've been doing this podcast for quite a while now, and I've loved it. It's been so much fun. Had a lot of good times, and I'm glad that so many other people enjoy it, too. So thank you for listening. I hope that you like this thing, and I hope that you enjoy being a part of the Dear Hank and John community. If you want to give us a rating on iTunes or a review or whatever that's called, that would be super cool. Uh, This podcast is produced and edited by Sam Antonioli. Thank you for doing this cool, fun episode, Sam. And thanks to everybody who sent in their suggestions for which bits we should include in this episode. Uh, the special pod. Our theme music, as you know, is from Gunnarola. If you want to help support the pod, you can do that at patreon.com slash dear Hank and John. You can email us your questions at hankandjohn at gmail.com. And as they say in our hometown, don't forget to be awesome.